sequencing basics. We're in our third video here on x -Lights Basics 4 2023, and we've got to talk about sequencing basics. Um, so sequencing is the process of taking music or just an animation and applying effects to your lights in x -Lights. OK, I recommend before you start sequencing, at least have your layout built. I mean, you have to have your layout built because if you don't have items in your layout, you can't sequence. The other thing you want to do, which we didn't cover in the layout video, but we do cover in the Learn Christmas Lightning Academy extensively. Try it out for just a dollar. Check out the link below is creating groups. Groups are really important when it comes to sequencing. The easiest way to make them is to select some a group of lights or models rather then go ahead, right click, create group from selection, give it a name. So I'm just going to make a spinner. I'm going to make a roof line. My tree is already on its own. It's the only mega tree. Uh, so I don't need a group for that. And then we're going to do everything. I call that all perfect. Hit save, control S, etc. And now we're ready to sequence. In the sequencer tab is where we're going to sequence. Okay. First thing you do is create a new sequence. And now you have the option to go musical or animation. The only difference is just that with musical, you add in a music track and then you start sequencing the music, right? And I'm just going to mute my audio here um, because I don't want to have any copyrighted music in this video uh, for the purpose of YouTube. So I'll go to musical sequence. This window pops right up. You want to go pick out uh, some music. So here's a song from my show last year. Then you have the option to set the frames per second. There's a lot of debate over this. Does it look better to do higher frames per second? It does. It makes your sequence files bigger though. Um, Honestly, I've, you know, as it says right here, if you're not ch sure, choose 20 frames per second. I'm kind of getting into the mentality now to just choose 40. Um, even though I realize in fast moving songs, in really fast moving animations, I can personally see the difference. I realize most of the viewers of my show cannot and do not care. So if you're not sure, choose 20. <laughs> then most common way to do it is just hit quick start. That's going to bring in all of your models in groups in the order that you had them uh, all ready to go. Now it's time to start really having fun. So we've got our music in the top here. We installed back in our first video, the QM vamp plugins, the Queen Mary vamp plugins. And that allows us to go right click right here on timing, new timing, add timing track. I go ahead and I do first a bars or a measures one, press OK. It's going to analyze the music. And then I do one that is the beats. Uh, other people do other things. Oops, not bars, beats. There's lots that you can do, but I start with these two to really work on my show. I like to select the bars one. I'm selecting it in this little drop dropdown. Uh, it does have some advantages in lining up effects and how they snap to the grid. And then we're going to start to bring in some effects. So... What you have here in the default window layout is you will have a model preview. That's the individual model you have selected. You have a house preview. That's your entire display. And then you have the sequencing area. So if I go and I grab an effect like the uh, butterfly, which is a very synonym, very um, obvious, very highly used effect. And I put it say on my whole house group, I see here that effect happen on the whole house in the model preview and in the house preview. If I take it and I can press control and use my up and down arrows and put it in smaller groups or individual models, you can see how the model preview changes to just that model or group as does the house preview. Now the house preview is always going to be not only the effect you have selected, but any other effects at the same time. So maybe I grab a balls effect and I put it on my all and I just increase the number of circles and the size so that we really see it. And now if I select my spinner, I see what my spinner's doing. Um, but I also see on the whole house, the other effects that are happening at the same time. Okay. Now sequencing honestly is one of the biggest rabbit trails you can take in this hobby. Okay. 
at the very base level, dragging effects onto this timeline um, and making them happen is kind of the basic way to sequence if you're going to sequence your own songs. It's one of those things that you can go into a song, you can spend just a few hours sequencing. I've done a lot of videos on that. We'll link to one here about how to sequence music in X Lights, whatever my most recent one on that was. Okay. With songs, and especially when you buy professional sequences, these sequencers have often spent upwards of 40, 80, even more hours on that sequence. It can be a lot. Okay. You can dive down that rabbit hole and it can take up a lot of time. Just be aware of that. I like to keep it simple um, sequencer, keep it simple sequencer, kiss, right? Um, and if you're doing sequences yourself, I like to do that, right? Don't let this burn you out. And you can always purchase sequences in order to make your show happen. So say you've got a purchased sequence. Ooh. How do you add a purchased sequence to your display? Great question, David. So I'm gonna do is just go ahead and delete these effects. And I know the sequence I'm going to bring in isn't even going to be for this song. If you've purchased a sequence and you have downloaded a zip file from the vendor, what you want to do is go to import, import effects. And I know in my Dropbox, I've got a bunch of them. This sequence is going to be one from, um, let's just grab 12 days of Christmas from Reliant K. I'm quite sure this is a PPD layout. Um, Pixel Pro Displays, if you haven't heard of them, great sequencing company. There's lots of sequencers out there. Um, PPD is a great one. Um, there are other great ones too. And what we're going to do then is basically you take their models that are available here on the right side and you drag them over to your models here on the left. Now, you can hit auto map. When you hit that, it looks at the models on this side and the models on this side. And if any have the same name, models, groups, etc., it goes automatically, right? If you use one particular sequencer a lot, you find you like their style, you find you like the selection of music they have, then laying out your layout with the same names as theirs can save you a lot of time. But AutoMap actually doesn't save you all that much time, and here's why, okay? Once we go ahead and we start, we just bring in here our different options, okay? So I'm gonna bring in my all display effects, and put that on my all group, all house. I really wish I had a group for that, I don't. So actually I'm gonna just put that on my roof line. Um, there's a lot because I've only done a couple models here. There's a lot that's not gonna come over, right? Because, you know, they've got, you know, a whole bunch of groups here. I've got like three groups, right? I've got my all, I've got my roof line, I've got my spinners and I've got my mega tree, which isn't technically a group, but is, you know, kind of a larger group of lights, right? So what I'm gonna do next is you wanna hit save mapping, okay? What this does for you is you can save this, for example, I would say PPD to my show, I'd name it that, save that mapping file, I'm not gonna do that right now. And then in the future, when I download another layout from another sequence from that same vendor, I just go load mapping, load the work that I've already done, so I would hit no there, um, load that mapping file that I saved, and then it's all already recalls what I had before, I'm probably done. Next, I'll press OK. And then what's going to happen is from that download, um, and it is going to ask you if, you if you didn't save your layout, they're going to be like, what are you doing? You should save your mapping, right? And you should. Um, but I'm doing this as a demonstration, so I'm not going to. What happens here then is as you go ahead, hope I meant to hit yes, all of the effects from that sequence come in and map to your sequence. Your computer will try to uh, grab those effects and render them. The best thing to do when you bring in a lot of new effects is just save. So Control S, Command S, save it in your show folder. And then you'll get this bar showing it rendering for you. And then as it renders or once it renders, you'll see those effects playing on your show. Awesome. So then you can go back and you can watch it. You can say, oh, do I like how these map? Do I not? You can tweak things individually, or you can go back, restart the mapping process, and rearrange some things from how you initially lined them up. You can line them up differently. The really big key is that as of, I think, last year, um, going ahead and making sure you don't unzip that zip file that you downloaded of your sequence, keep it zipped, import effects, select that zip file. Okay, that means when you do that, 
your videos that are referenced by that sequence that are included in there and your shader effects um, both come in and match up automatically. If you unzip the file and go find the effects manually, which is the old way to do it, um, then you have to reconnect all those items or move them into a similar full into an exact same folder reference. Don't do that. Okay. So <laughs> with that guys, that is really the basics of sequencing. And so, in our next video, we're going to talk about scheduling and uploading your show. And this is very much a 30,000 foot, very simple view. If you want something more in depth, we have a step-by-step -step complete video course that walks you through everything you need to do, actually multiple courses to make your first Christmas light display and then to add to it, to continue with it in the future. If you want access to that, you want to check it out, you can try it for just a dollar. It's part of the Learn Christmas Lighting Academy, and you can get more details on that below or probably here on this end screen. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.